It's Bible time. <gasps> it's Bible time. It's Bible time. It's, it's Bible, Bible time. time. <gasps> it's Bible time with Aunt JJ. It's, it's Bible time with Aunt JJ. It's Bible time with Aunt JJ. That's me. Get your Bible if you have one, because it's time to study the Bible together. The Bible is God's Word. God helps men write it so we can know for sure that everything in it is completely true. We've been learning about how the Israelites got to the land God had promised them, how they lived in a pattern of disobedience, discipline, and deliverance, and how they wanted to have a human king rule over them instead of having God as their king. God warned them that having a king and being like the other nations wouldn't go well for them, but they did not listen to God's warning. Saul was chosen as king, and so far the Israelites seemed pleased with their decision to make Saul king. Could God have been wrong to warn them about it going badly? What do you think? Let's keep reading to see what happened next when Saul was king of the Israelites. We will see how well King Saul obeyed God. To get us thinking about obeying, we are going to play head to toe. I'm going to say a part of the body. You touch that part of your own body as quickly as you can. See how well you can obey. Are you ready? Head, shoulders, knees, toes, knees, toes, elbows, toes, head, knees, Elbows, head, toes, toes, elbows, shoulders, shoulders, knees, toes, head, shoulders, toes, elbows, head. Great job playing head to toe with me. How well did you follow the directions? Did they get harder when I went faster? This was just a silly game and it didn't really matter if you could obey every time. But when it comes to obeying God, Every word of God should be completely obeyed. His law and instructions are important and they are good. We need to know what God says and completely obey him every time. Do you think King Saul always obeyed God? Let's read and find out. I'm going to read from the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel is in the Old Testament and is after Ruth. 1 Samuel is a book of history. It records true things that really happened with real people. I'm going to read from 1 Samuel chapter 13 and 15. At this point in history, King Saul had led the Israelites in a great victory against the Ammonites, but now the Philistines are coming against them. Let's read and see what happened with the battle against the Philistines. While I read, listen to see if the people obeyed God or disobeyed God. Give a thumbs up when I read about someone obeying God. Give a thumbs down when I read about someone disobeying God. Saul chose 3,000 of Israel's men. 2,000 of them were with him. 1,000 were with Jonathan. The Philistines gathered together to fight against Israel. They had 3,000 chariots and 6,000 chariot drivers. Their soldiers were as many as the grains of sand on the seashore. The Israelites saw that their army was in deep trouble, so they hid in caves. They hid among bushes and rocks. They also hid in pits and empty wells. Some of them even went across the Jordan River. They went to the lands of Gad and Gilead. Saul remained at Gilgal. All the troops with him were shaking with fear. He waited seven days, just as Samuel had told him to. But Samuel didn't come to Gilgal. And Saul's men began to scatter. So he said, Bring me the burnt offering and the friendship offerings. Then he offered up the burnt offering. Just as Saul finished offering the sacrifice, Samuel arrived. Saul went out to greet him. What have you done? asked Samuel. Saul replied, I saw that the men were scattering. I saw that the Philistines were gathering together at Michmash. You didn't come when you said you would. So I thought, now the Philistines will come down to attack me in Gilgal, and I haven't asked the Lord for his blessing. So I felt I had to sacrifice the burnt offering. You have done a foolish thing, Samuel said. You haven't obeyed the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have made your kingdom secure over Israel for all time to come. But now your kingdom won't last. The Lord has already looked for a man who is dear to his heart. He has appointed him king of his people. That's because you haven't obeyed the Lord's command. Now let's read what happened later when the Israelites were going against the Amalekites. Samuel gave Saul a message from God. Now go, attack the Amalekites, completely destroy all that belongs to them. Saul attacked the Amalekites. So Saul and the army spared Agag, 
They spared the best of the sheep and cattle. They spared the fat cows and lambs. They spared everything that was valuable. They weren't willing to completely destroy any of those things. But they totally destroyed everything that was worthless and weak. Early the next morning, Samuel got up. He went to see Saul. Samuel said, There was a time when you didn't think you were important, but you became the leader of the tribes of Israel. The Lord anointed you to be king over Israel. He sent you to do something for him. He said, Go and completely destroy the Amalekites. Go and destroy those evil people. Fight against them until you have wiped them out. Why didn't you obey the Lord? Why did you keep for yourselves what you had taken from your enemies? Why did you do what is evil in the sight of the Lord? But I did obey the Lord, Saul said. I went to do what he sent me to do. I completely destroyed the Amalekites. I brought back Agag, their king. The soldiers took sheep and cattle from what had been taken from our enemies. They took the best of what had been set apart to God. They wanted to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Gilgal. But Samuel replied, What pleases the Lord more, burnt offerings and sacrifices or obeying the Lord? It is better to obey than to offer a sacrifice. It is better to do what he says than to offer the fat of rams. You have refused to do what the Lord told you to do. So he has refused to have you as king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I have broken the Lord's command. I haven't done what you directed me to do. I was afraid of the men. So I did what they said I should do. Now I beg you, forgive my sin. Samuel turned to leave, but Saul grabbed the hem of his robe and it tore. Samuel said to Saul, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel away from you today. He has given it to one of your neighbors. He has given it to someone better than you. How many times did you give a thumbs up? We could give Samuel two thumbs up. Samuel told Saul the truth, even though it was bad news for Saul. How many times did you give a thumbs down? We could give Saul two thumbs down. Saul disobeyed God in both situations we read about today. And Samuel directly pointed out Saul's disobedience. To review what happened, we're going to play this or that. I'm going to ask a question and give two possible answers. You jump to the side of the screen that has the correct answer. Who had more fighters, the Israelites or the Philistines? The Philistines, they had a ton more fighters than the Israelites. How did the Israelites respond to being outnumbered by the Philistines? They hid in fear. They were strong and brave. They hid in fear. The verse says they saw that their army was in deep trouble, so they hid. What was Saul waiting on before going into battle? For Samuel to arrive and give an offering? For the night to come to surprise attack the Philistines? Saul was waiting on Samuel to get there. Why did Saul think it was okay for him to disobey God and offer the offerings himself? He thought anyone could give the offerings? He thought he was running out of time for the offerings to be made. It sounded to me like Saul tried to put some of the blame on Samuel for not coming when he said he would. Saul said he thought the Philistines were going to attack him before he had asked God for a blessing. But that did not make his actions right. What did Samuel say was the consequence for Saul doing what only a priest was supposed to do? Saul would lose the kingdom to a new king. Saul would die that day. Saul was going to lose the kingdom to a new king. If only Saul had obeyed God, his kingdom would have gone on and on. But Saul chose his own way instead of God's way. And that always ends poorly. What did God tell Saul to do with the Amalekites? Make them leave the land. Completely destroy them. God told Saul to completely destroy the Amalekites and everything that belonged to them. God was punishing them. What did Saul do with the Amalekites? Completely destroyed them. Completely destroyed everything that wasn't valuable. The Israelites completely destroyed everything that they didn't think was valuable. They did not completely obey God. Why did Saul think it was okay to disobey God this time? The people were going to offer sacrifices with the things they kept? God really didn't mean what he said. When Samuel questioned Saul, Saul blamed the people for what happened. He said they were going to offer sacrifices with the things they kept, but that did not make his actions right. Saul directly disobeyed God again. Samuel told Saul that to God, obedience is better than offering sacrifices. After Saul was faced with that sin, he admitted that he let the fear of men influence him to sin, and he asked for forgiveness. What was the consequence of Saul's disobedience? There were no consequences because Saul asked for forgiveness. God took the kingdom from Saul. Samuel told Saul that, just like Saul tore the corner of Samuel's robe, God tore the kingdom away from Saul. 
Being forgiven of sin does not mean there will not be consequences from our sin. Saul was not a good king, and God was giving the kingdom to someone else. Great job playing this or that with me. Even though God allowed Saul to become king, he knew all of this was going to happen. He warned the Israelites that it wasn't going to go well. Saul directly disobeyed God more than once. He let out of fear instead of faith. By the end of chapter 15, we even read that Saul called the Lord Samuel's God, not his God or their God. God was going to give the kingdom to someone else. Many of you will recognize his name, but we will have to learn about him another time. Now it's time for Eyes on Him, the part of our lesson when we focus on what the scriptures say about God. When you study the Bible, look for what the scripture reveals or shows about God. Then think about how that knowledge of God should impact, change, matter to your life. I see that God is sovereign over timing. That means God has complete authority and control over the timing of things. Samuel showed up at just the right time, the right time to show Saul's simple heart. What we see as delays are indications that God is working. We don't always know how, but God is always working. Our times are in his hand and his timing is always perfect. I see that God is always right. God warned the people that having a human king would not go well for them. Even though it may have seemed at first like God was wrong, we can already see how God was right. God is always right. If it seems to us like God is wrong, we can be sure we do not see the situation clearly because God is always right. I see that God's instructions are for our good. We should obey God because He is God and deserves to be obeyed. But we should also obey God because His instructions are for our good. If Saul had obeyed God, his kingdom would have gone on and on, which is exactly what Saul wanted. But Saul thought he could get there his own way and not God's way. But God's instructions are for our good. What else does this passage show you about God? How should you live differently? Because of who God is. And now it's time for the Wheel of Wonder. The time in our lesson when we spin the wheel and wonder. What will our Wheel of Wonder question be today? It landed on orange. Our Wheel of Wonder question for today is, did the Israelites win the battle against the Philistines? If you want to know all the details of what happened with that battle, go back and read 1 Samuel chapter 14. Yes, the Israelites won. Saul's son, Jonathan, and Jonathan's servant fought some Philistines and won. Just the two of them. When that happened, the Philistines panicked. They got confused and started killing each other. Then Israelites started fighting the Philistines and the Israelites won the battle. Things were tough for the Israelites though, because Saul made unwise choices that made the battle hard. Saul was not a good leader. Still, God was gracious. God gave them victory, even though their king wasn't completely following him. God is so gracious. God is so good. When the Lord gives directions, He should be obeyed completely. God doesn't accept excuses. Not fear, not unmet expectations, not pressure from others, not even excuses that might sound spiritual. God desires obedience. God deserves obedience. And obeying God is for our good. Let's pray. Holy Father, You are the Sovereign Lord God. Please help us to learn how You want us to live and give us the grace to live in faith, not fear. Please give us the desire and strength to follow you completely. You deserve our obedience. You are worthy of whatever you ask us to do. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, sweet friends, I love studying God's Word with you today. There's no better time than Bible time, and I hope you will join me next time for Bible Time with Aunt JJ. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and go to BibleTimeWithAuntJJ.com for free activities that go along with today's Bible study. It's Bible Time with Aunt JJ!